In the repair shop today, Steve has set a unique challenge. Do you know what? I, I, I've never <laughs> seen a pipe like this. I've never repaired a pipe. Yeah. I've repaired a lot of things, but not a pipe. While Kirsten pieces together a historical artifact with a dark story to tell. Three legions of Roman soldiers were actually massacred. It was a turning point in history. But first, Corey Evans has turned to the repair shop for help with a faded relic from her childhood. She's hoping that Jay and gramophone guru Tim Weeks can jump start it back to life. Hello, you must be Corey. Hello. You all right? Yeah. Hi, Corey. I'm Hi, Tim. Yeah. Pleased to meet you. And you. Yeah. So this is your baby, yeah? Yeah. Can I have a look? Yeah. So what is it then? It's a Dalek. It's a Dalek. It's a Dalek <laughs> and a record player. Dalek and a record player. Ah. And a yes. broken old radio. So hold on, why'd you call it a Dalek? Well, it looked like a Dalek when I was little, and that's why I bought it. I really... I wanted a Dalek. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have one. <laughs> it had the records in here, but they've gone. Ah, oh, yeah. I yes. had the laughing policeman and very... The laughing the policeman. It was the only one I liked. OK. How long have you had this? And... I bought it when I was five in an auction. Five years old yeah. in an auction? Yeah. Well, I bought it, but even my dad paid five for years it. Five old? I was in the auction. <laughs> I was having it. Oh, OK, OK. <laughs> and I think, cos I was little and I liked this, yeah. nobody bid it against me, so I got it. <laughs> OK. And it wouldn't have been much. What you've got here, actually, was quite interesting. It's the changeover period between the wind-up gramophone that you had to put needles in and the beginning of electronic reproduction. Oh. This sort of thing only lasted for a short time because quite soon afterwards, they, of course, they went over to 33s and 45s. It, it's a curious historical anomaly, this. Oh. Which will need mending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit bad. Yes. So uh, when was the last time this was working, then? The I think time? it was what, just before I left home, so when I was about 15 or 16, and I love it. Yes. It's my sister and me just lying on the floor listening to the laughing policeman over and over and over again, and we've probably ruined all those needles. Right. Laughing That's... with my sisters, and she's, no, she's not with us anymore, so just to uh... have this with my kids laughing at it would be great. It would be really funny. The other thing I do notice is that the lid here mm. seems to have a lot of... Uh... Well, I imagine those are wine. That looks like ink on the top. Did you it's ever...? It's for aspidistra. There was always an aspidistra on it. Always. Yeah. It is an immutable law of physics that anything that is flat will be used as a shelf. Yeah. What do you want us to do to this? What would you like us to do? I'd like to get that bit working. Which is the record Radi player? Record player. OK, right. If the radio can work, that's lovely. Oh, one of my fins is broken, that one. That's okay. me doing that every day. Oh, that since one that's loose? Yeah, since I was five, I've done that. Every day I walk past it. <laughs> I don't mind about the scratches and the battered, cos it's been much loved. This, by the way, I've just found inside there. I know what that is. What that is is it's actually what they call the cursor. Uh, yeah. It's the thing that's supposed to be inside there, sliding up and down, to tell you what, <laughs> what station it's on. <laughs> Putting a new one of those on. That's going to be real fun. Well, no, we, we could definitely get it going. Can't we, Tim? Talk to me. We can do it. Yeah. We're gonna thank you. We're gonna Simpleness it. of it, we're going to get working. So <laughs> thank you for bringing it. The short answer is we can get it working. <laughs> right. <laughs> nice to meet you, Gary. Thank, thank you. Bye. You take care. If you can get that working, I'd be totally shocked. I think I have trashed it. But this is why five-year-olds shouldn't have wooden things like that, maybe. So, what do you reckon, Tim? Uh, what's well, got to be done? What's got to be done is pretty well everything. <laughs> OK. But I think in order, in order, I think we'll have... We'll have the motor out, make sure it actually runs. Get that working. If, yes, if we can actually get the turntable spinning, I'll feel a lot happier. Then we'll get the amplifier and tuner out of here. I have okay. to take all these knobs off the front. That should come out the back of the cabinet then. OK. And then if we've got time when we've done all that, I'd like to take the hinge out the bottom here and take the dents out of it so that that actually shuts flush into there. So just a little bit of work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. oh we have a ten-minute job. OK. Ten-minute job. Let's get this over to your bench, then. Radio. All right. Tim will need to draw on all of his 50 years of gramophone experience to get this one up and running again. 
The main concern with ancient electrical devices is that the old components and wiring can pose a serious fire risk. So Tim must proceed with caution. I think what we need to do first here is get the electric motor running. And the electric motor is, of course, this bit here. What I'll have to do first is take the main winding out of there, see if we can get it to turn smoothly. It's probably just gummed in place by a lot of old oil and grease that's gone hard, set like toffee around it, it will have done. So we need to clean all that lot off, re-lubricate it, and then, bit of luck and a following wind, we'll have the thing spinning. Before we do anything else, let's de-grot, to use the technical term, get it spinning nice and freely, and then, then the acid test is we put some current across it and see whether she goes. The repair shop has seen some unusual items pass through its doors. And the next arrival is no exception. It's been brought here by 85-year-old Lisking Jellings and her granddaughter, Kate. Hello, ladies. How are we doing? So what have we got here, then? My great-grandfather's pipe. OK. Well, this looks like a job for Steve. Steve, if you don't mind joining me. Hello. Hi. Clockmaker Steve Hi. is no pipe specialist, he's pipe. but he's always up for a challenge. Do you know what? I, I, I've never <laughs> seen a pipe like this. I've never repaired a pipe. Yeah. I've repaired a lot of things, but not a pipe. So how long has it been in the family, then? Oh, it's been in the family since... Well, we estimated then. something like 140 years. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, gosh. It depends when he bought it. We don't know when he bought the pipe. The Mishkan pipe, you, it takes an enormous amount of... Yeah. ..of tobacco. And it, it is blocked. I can't blow through it. OK. <laughs> but... Ornate pipes like this first came into use in the 18th century. The bowl is carved from a porous white mineral called Miasham, or sepulite found in abundance in the Black Sea region. The more they are smoked, the more the white bowls are stained a golden brown by the tobacco. Have you ever seen this pipe being used? No, I haven't. But my mother says when she was five, she used to be with her grandfather a lot. She told me that he used to sit in his rocking chair. The, this bowl was resting on a stool by his feet, and he just sat and the smoke whirled around him. He had been a very busy businessman. He'd been mayor of the town. He, he had ha done a lot of good work. And I would like to do it in his honor, too, mm. that, that it isn't just a wreck in a, in a drawer. Yeah. Yes. Where was he mayor? Sheehan in Norway. All oh, right, OK. Yes. He, I have got Norwegian parents. So it's quite a, an important piece to it you. Is. For, for, from for a, for me. A, yes, yes. For, from a family point of view. Yes. So what could we do for you then? One day I came and it had collapsed. This had fallen off. And this had always been worn, the okay. flexible bit. Um, I'll probably have to dissect this slightly to, to have a look and see exactly how it was made. Um, and then try and replicate that. If we got this fully working and on blocked again down there, what would it mean? What would we do? We'd have a party. Oh, we would have a party. <laughs> 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 have a party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quite party. Oh, do you smoke, C? Yeah. Do you no, smoke? No, I don't. Oh, I was going to offer you the first <laughs> oh, <see>. smoke. <laughs> he might take it up. You never know. <laughs> I'll get it over to my bench now. Yeah. I'm delighted that they have accepted this and that they will repair it. It means a lot to me. I know it would mean an incredible amount to my mother. This is a really nice pipe. Um, some lovely, lovely silver mounts to it. These are beautiful. It is really well blocked. I'm not sure how I'm going to get to the blockage, actually, because I can see down both ends. So the, the, the blockage is in the part I can't see. Once it's all polished up and I've, and I've polished all the, the silver up, I think it'll look really nice. I think this is the, the real difficult part. Um, there's, this, there's a spring that's in pretty poor condition here. I'll probably have to make a new spring. The leather work on the pipe is also in a sorry state. Hello. Yeah. What are you doing? 
So Steve's roped in his sister and master saddle maker, Susie, for some assistance. So that's connected to that, like that. Yep. OK. And then at this top end, it's got this flexible piece that goes in there, like that. Right. And then that goes in there like that. OK. The part connecting the mouthpiece to the stem is a flexible hose constructed from a leather-bound spring. See that leather inside there? Mm. Actually, what I've done is I've cut a piece off here. You see, so the spring goes in the middle, right. and then there's three layers of, of leather. That is leather, isn't it? Yes. OK. Yeah. This spring is so old and rusty, and the leather so worn, that the only solution is to build a new section from scratch. Leather's a lovely material to show. Yeah. And we can certainly stain it to this colour. Um, I think the leather on the outside would look very pretty because it'll be pigskin that I'll use. All right, so it has okay. a grain to it. Yeah, yeah. So there's your texture. And I'm, I'm assuming they're not going to be smoking yet, are they? Well, they say not. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> we'll so, see. Yeah. OK, and you can do this spring. You can remake the spring. Yeah, I've got some piano wire on the, on, on the way. Then it shouldn't be too difficult, should it? Oh, piece of cake. Oh, really? <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> Gramophone whiz Tim Weeks is up to his eyes with an ancient radio that's been loved to death. One little drop of oil in there. The turntable motor is first on his restoration hit list. That's what we want. That was jammed up solid. Now it's spinning like a top. So what we now have to do is put this cap back onto here, tighten it up with the right size spanner, 4BA spanner, very old-fashioned size, very old-fashioned motor. And then we're in with a fighting chance, and we've actually got this motor running. That sits on that spindle there. That, in turn, the other side of that wheel, presses on the underside of this. Now, let's see what happens. I'm hoping that when I move this arm over, and there'll be a click, and this turntable will start to spin. If that doesn't happen, I think I'll leave the building and see if I can get a job on the dust cart. Here we go. You beauty. You beauty. That is exactly what I was hoping for. Now for the fun bit which would be to get the tuner amplifier out of the cabinet and see if we can get that to work. Many of the objects receiving the expert's TLC are simply suffering the ravages of time. But for some, the workshop becomes an antiquities A&E. Brenda and Norman Jenner have brought in a much-loved family heirloom which has met with an unfortunate accident. That's a big pot in there. It is a big pot. Is. It yeah. is a big pot. Oh, right, OK. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Absolutely fabulous, isn't it? Really exciting piece, actually. Um, right. You know, how, how long have you had it? Where, where, where did it come from? <laughs> Well, the history of it, I, my earliest rem memory of it was when I was probably about three years old. Oh, God. And it, was, it sat in my Nana Norfolk's house yep. in um, Benfleet in Essex. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw this jug at the end of the, the hallway and I was just attracted to it. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, it took pride of place in her house. When Nana died, Mum inherited the vase and that sat in various rooms in our in her house so this has been with you all your life really it's, i yes i've known it all my life and it made a obviously a big impression when you were very very young it, it's it was it was one of those things it's it, i don't have any photos of it and unfortunately we don't have many photos of nana so the memories that this jug brings back is is us of children and you know just wonderful brings back then lots and lots of happy memories what have we got here? Presumably the... the um... These are the broken 
bits. Right. That's part of the lip. How did it break? Well, uh, <laughs> it stood in the uh, bay window of our house. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, one Christmas, we were taking down the Christmas decorations and poor Norman stepped off the ladder, oh, no. knocked the speaker, which knocked into the vase, oh. which went oh, no. on the floor. <laughs> That's just... Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel for you. I really do. And how long ago was that? How many Christmases? Oh, it must be getting on for about 15 odd years. Oh, God. really? Yeah. So, let's see what, what you've got here, then, if I could okay. have, a, yeah. have a look. So, so we've got that, that yeah. obviously... That does fit on that. There we there go. We go. Yeah. Lovely. OK, so we've got that, which is great. What do you think your Nana would think if... Oh, I think she'd be very, very, very proud and very pleased to see it back all in one piece yeah. again. I think it's a really lovely, interesting piece and um, I would certainly love to restore it. Oh. If you're happy to leave it with us yeah. and... Uh, I'll get on with it. OK, Lovely. thank you very much. Nice Thanks to meet you. you. I think my initial concern really is whether all the pieces are here and I'm just trying to sort of, like a jigsaw, just get a rough sort of outline of what's actually here and what I'm going to have to make up. For me, the worst case scenario is if there's going to be an area missing with a lot of detail in it that I'm then going to have to model up. Um, as you can see, it's absolutely covered in, in decorations. So um, I'm hoping that everything's here, but if it's not, I'll just have to deal with it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tim's fixed the turntable on the gramophone. Next, he's turning his attention to the radio. So what should now happen, all being well, that the whole thing will lift clear and we can take the tuner amp out of the case. And there we are. What's interesting is that it gives one of the stations here as the BBC light programme. And what that tells us is that this is, in fact, made after the war rather than before it. I'd assume this was pre-war, about 1937-38. I would say now this must be post-war. And I'll tell you how we know that, because the light programme didn't come into being until 1946, I think it was. But pre- or post-war, reattaching the stray tuning cursor is going to be a bit of a battle. Fortunately, Tim's armed with a secret weapon. I've been able to find the instructions and the diagram for how it's done on this particular set. This was published in a trade magazine in 1949. And the instructions, in case you want to try this yourselves, go like this. Pass one end into the drive wheel through the hole K, make a small loop into it, wind it clockwise around the fixing boss inside and fix the loop to the screw D. Drop pulley N, and with the free wire, round three and three quarter turns anti-clockwise into the loud outer channel, winding towards the rear of the channel, running off at T to the pulley M. Following that, are we? It's great fun. Absolutely great fun. And any suggestion that one might use bad language at a time like this is totally not the case. All we need to do now, heat the soldering iron up and fix it into place. Steve and Susie are steaming ahead with the restoration of the elderly Meerschaum pipe. I'm just about to make a new spring for the pipe. Um, I'm not sure how much uh, length I need, but um, I've got three metres of um, hard wire. It's always surprising how much wire you need to make a small spring. And that's the spring. I'll tidy up the ends now, and then Susie's going to cover that with the leather, and uh, the pipe should have its new springy top to it. 
Right, okay. here we go. Made the spring. Oh, look at that. That's very impressive. Thank you very much. Cool. Yep. OK, I look yep. forward to seeing it. Yep. OK, all right, thanks so much. Susie's first job is to wrap and glue layers of leather around the spring ready to be stitched. I've got three layers of pigskin on the here, so I'm sewing the seam to lock all the leathers together. Next, some staining. I've just done a test spot on um, a leftover piece of pigskin just to see how it's going to come out. Looks really nice. Susie's leather work is done. Now it's back over to Steve to reassemble the pipe. Oh, that looks fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, I'll have to get it all together then, um, and then uh, get you to smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> all right, thanks. Over in the ceramic section of the workshop, Kirsten is discovering some more hidden secrets within the 19th century German pitcher. You can see where someone else has restored it. In the past, it's got this old sort of glue squadging out. So it's obviously been in the, in the wars a bit. These old repairs need to be carefully undone and each piece painstakingly cleaned in readiness for the main restoration. They are all coming apart really quite nicely now. Um, I've got most of these pieces apart um, and I'm in the process of just cleaning off the old adhesive from, from the edges. So how's my ceramic queen doing? Hello, you. All right? Yeah, good, actually. Thank you. What's, <laughs> what's happening there? Look at oh, that. yeah, OK. That's quite interesting. I, I think it's probably um, a crack that appeared, um, a firing crack, so it's actually in the manufacture of the piece. It's okay. a really big piece and it's got so much stuff sort of added to it that yeah. it probably happened um, in the manufacture. And you can hear when you tap it, yeah. it sounds good. It's got a really nice sort of ring to it and that means that actually it's... It's not busted? No. So what are you going to do with this now then? You're going to... So I'm taking off the old old restoration yeah. and I'm going to give this a really good clean using this, the uh, steam cleaner that I've got there. Actually, that's the sort of thing you quite like doing. I would it? love yeah, to do yeah, that, no. actually, but I know you won't let me. <laughs> no, so no, I won't. won't. <laughs> it's really satisfying, this. I know, it would be. So I'm just going to try and remove any excess dirt. So it's great for getting in all, all these sort of nooks and crannies and yeah. detail. Lifting the dirt, you can see it yeah. compared to there. Yeah, it's great. Isn't wow. It? Tim has his hands full with a dilapidated gramophone. He's reattached the cursor for the radio. Now it's time to find out if the whole system will come back to life. We've now got all the major component parts sorted, I think, and ready to go. The deck connected to the tuner amp. The speaker's over here, so we'll need to link that up to the output from the amp. Now for the really interesting bit. We plug it in, see if it all goes. So they're both plugged in like so. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Not quite sure. What's wrong there? You're all right. Just um, seem to have plunged the place into darkness. I think you have. Yes. <laughs> Sorry so what have you done? That. You've just plugged that in. Well, I've plugged the radio, plugged the tuner amplifier part of it in. That was fine. Yeah. That was fine. Plugged the deck in. OK. Uh, and uh, suddenly all the lights went out. Yeah. So is it unplugged? Everything's unplugged? Everything's unplugged now. OK. So if we, if we can reset the, uh, the fuses, there's a reasonable chance we can work out what's actually gone wrong. I think maybe there's a little short out going on inside here. And they're staying on. That's a good sign. That is a good sign. That is a good sign. Yeah. I don't quite know what's happening there. I'll just take this apart and see if we've got a short in there before we risk it again. Power 
are restored, the workshop is back in full swing. Steve's managed to remove the blockage from the mere charm pipe. And after a thorough polish, he can put the ancient puffer back together. There we are. All finished. Ready to... <coughs> to smoke. Oh, it's a bit dusty. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's wonderfully made. The, the, the threads on, on these wooden parts are absolutely fantastic. The, the way everything goes together, this um, stick tube that goes into the uh, taper of the, the silver bit um, just fits so, so well. I mean, everything is beautifully, beautifully made on this uh, pipe. Liskin and Kate are back at the repair shop, ready to be reunited with their precious family heirloom. I think we're looking forward to seeing it whole, aren't we? Yes. Back in one piece. And to see it, I think it is a beautiful pipe. And I, I would like to see it in its full glory. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Come and have a seat. A bit <laughs> oh. All right. Thank you. Now then. Right, you're looking forward to this moment. Yes, very <laughs> much. I didn't sleep last night. Oh, really? <laughs> OK. It's, uh... Abra Cadabra. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How marvellous. Oh, my gosh, that's amazing. Look yeah. at that. Beautiful. <laughs> OK. Look how shiny it is. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been like that for years. Right. <laughs> now, wait a minute, I'm going to blow. <laughs> Oh, you can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> That's marvellous. Marvellous. Oh, so good. You've done an amazing job. Thank you. This end here, do mm -hmm. you remember what it was like? I do. OK. Um, so uh, I've made a new coil spring to go inside it because the old coil spring was, was rusty was, was rusty and all bent up. Yeah. And then Susie um, has covered it with um, pig skin. Yeah. It's beautiful. That's what oh it my gosh. Like before. <laughs> <laughs> you see what Much better. <laughs> you see what a miracle you've done. You don't know how many years I've been trying to get it repaired. Oh really? Yeah. Right. You said that this piece had fallen off of, of yes. this, this main wooden uh, pipe. Um, it had. Now it, it, it's actually meant to come off. Is it? Mm. So 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 it, it pushes on really tight oh, and, really? And, and stays on. That's oh, so that's you can clean it out. Oh, so it was meant to be a part. That's interesting, because yes. we thought it was We thought one it hole. was part of the collapse. No, no, no I'm, sure, I'm, I'm absolutely sure it's for, for the cleaning of it. When do you think it was last in this condition? Oh, gosh. I reckon over 100 years it probably hasn't looked like this. Mm, that's true. Yes. When it was brand new, I should think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, better than new this is. I can't believe it. You have been marvellous. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I was quite moved, actually, but I'm good at hiding it. <laughs> it is better than I ever thought it could be. It, he's done a wonderful job, really wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It looks amazing. The whole family, they have got strict instructions that I'll haunt them <laughs> if they sell it. <laughs> Ceramics expert Kirsten has cleaned the 19th century German pitcher and removed all the old glue from the broken pieces. Now she can focus on putting it all back together again. The adhesive that I'm using is quite a strong epoxy resin, so hopefully it should hold. It's really important to assess the pieces that you've got and um, I normally actually do like a sort of dummy run um, before I actually start sort of uh, using any adhesive. If you get things in the wrong order actually lock pieces out so you maybe get three or four or five bits together and then you suddenly find that there's a little piece that actually you can't fit in. Keeping the neck in place with tape, Kirsten moves on to the smaller pieces. The 
glue is now dry and the fix seems to have held. But several smaller pieces were lost when the pitcher was knocked over. Fortunately, Kirsten is a dab hand with specialist modeling clays. So how you doing, Kirst? Well, oh, you come along in there. <laughs> hey. Thank you. I'm glad you can see the difference. Do you know what? I'm actually really, really pleased with this. I was just working on it a few moments ago and thinking, you know, this was just in pieces. Like, it was so... I was so anxious about putting it together because it's so heavy. There's such big sort of pieces, like, on the handle and stuff. I was working on it, sort of moving it round, and actually it's it's stable, it's solid. It's... Yeah. I'm... I'm Really delighted with the way you it's gone back happy. together. Yeah. So see on here then, yeah? Do, yeah. Do, these pictures that are here, you've got people with like that guy looks like a beer. Yeah. Like he's wearing a beer's hat yeah. or something. Yeah, there's quite a few of them on here actually. So actually we've done a little bit of research on this right. and in fact it is the it's it is depicting a massacre in the Teutoborg forest in Germany. Okay. So this piece is from um, northwest Germany. Right. It's very sort of typical. The actual clay used and the type of ceramic is very typical to that area. The massacre itself um, is, is actually quite interesting. It was a point in history where the Romans were actually sort of coming up through Europe. OK. And um, they had a leader who was called Herman the German. Right. What was it? <laughs> yeah. Who's not joking? <laughs> no, I'm not Herman joking. Herman the German. Herman the German. OK. And the Romans thought that he was, <laughs> you know, loyal to them. And they were coming up through Germany and he led the Roman legions into a massacre in the Teutoborg Forest. It was actually sort of a point, a turning point in history because up until that point, the Romans had been, you know, everyone thought that they were invincible. Right. And at this yeah. point, where three legions of Roman soldiers were actually massacred, you know, it's sort of... Because of massacre. what Herman the German did. Herman the German. The last time Tim plugged in the gramophone, he blew a fuse. He's hoping for more luck second time round. You're taking the turntable off? We've taken the turntable off. Yeah. I've had the cover off of there. OK. Um, the wiring in there seems to be OK. It's only two wires just come to a couple of terminals. Yeah. So I can't, for the life of me, see anything wiring-wise wrong with it. OK. So I think the only thing to do is plug it in and see if it goes, See what again. happens? Okay. So, you ready for this? Yeah, I am. I see. That's the bit I just plugged in when all the lights went out. All right. Now the other bit, of course, is to turn the tuner on and see if it all. See what happens when we do that? There we are. That's good. And the valves lighting up. We got it all going. So you've got it all sorted. You blew the fuse, but I'm happy. Yeah? Yeah. I'm never going to forget about blowing that fuse out. Neither am I. No. All right? Righto. OK, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Meanwhile, Kirsten has been repairing a damaged 19th century German jug. Now she's successfully reassembled all of the broken pieces, she can start the delicate process of repairing the firing crack. It's quite vulnerable as it is at the moment because it's actually sticking out um, and it could easily get sort of knocked or broken. So someone else has actually filled it at some point just with something like plaster. I'm not quite sure what it is. And I've removed that. Um, and I'm going to make up a coloured fill just out of a two-part um, adhesive, adding some pigment and I'm just going to run that in here to actually try and mimic the glaze that's there. It's quite handy, really. This is so incredibly busy that the eye sort of isn't naturally drawn to this crack at all. But I think that the uh, colour filling is um, blending in quite nicely and supporting and hiding um, the firing crack. With the firing crack fixed, Kirsten can put the finishing touches to the paintwork. I've brought the um, blue picture outside, um, actually for a couple of reasons. Um, the main one being that actually um, 
I'm in the process of painting it and this glaze is very shiny and it's reflecting light and it was making it quite difficult inside to see these dark sort of colours, these dark blues. So I brought it out here and actually the light is so much better um, and I'm going to just try and finish it off outside. With the help of the natural daylight, the end of the restoration is in sight. And just in the nick of time, as Brenda and Norman have returned to see what magic she's been able to work. Oh, we're feeling really excited, aren't we? We've yes, been we waiting are. such a long time and uh, we've been just waiting for that phone call, so very exciting day. Hi. Oh, hello. Hi, hello. lovely to see you. Hi. To see you. Come in. <laughs> Can you remember what the blue picture was like when you brought it in? Yes, it was in several pieces yep. um, and the neck was in two halves and the handle, I think, was in three it was. bits. Yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't think you'd ever be able to put that together <laughs> again, but <laughs> looks like you may have. <laughs> right, well, I won't keep you waiting any longer. I shall reveal your piece. That's incredible. That is just how I remember it. It's brought back my childhood. I'm three years old again. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, seeing it. And, uh, oh, gosh, that is so good. And the handle's all in one piece, too. <laughs> Lovely. Mm. We never okay. saw that never like saw that, that, did we? Because that was in two pieces and there was a bit missing, wasn't there? There was, yes. I made up a, um, oh. a part of that. Was that always missing, then, that bit? Or no, that? I don't no. think so. I think that... Probably went up the hoover. <laughs> Possibly, yes. <laughs> quite, a, quite a few bits went up the hoover, but we, we kept the biggest bits, yeah. I'm not sure yes. I've actually got a box big enough for it to fit in. Have you? Yeah, we, we brought a big sleeping oh, bag. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> we haven't got a box big it's enough. Nice. Okay. <laughs> oh, just feeling over the moon. It's just. Beyond how I imagined that it would be. I've got four grandchildren and I'm looking forward to them seeing it for the first time because they've never seen it. And then at Christmas, <laughs> it's going to have the Christmas decorations in like Mum did and Nana before her. So it's a lot of history that's just come back to life, isn't it? It's, today? Nice, it's a nice piece of the family coming back home, basically. Yes, it is, yes. Tim's huge undertaking with the antique gramophone is almost over. All of the separate parts are back in working order. He's even fixed the sticking record drawer. And furniture restorer Will has erased all evidence of the old stains from the top of the cabinet. Of course, it's a bit heavier now than when we put it up. Time to put this piece of audio history back together again. The last time Corrie saw her dear old gramophone, it was in a sorry state, without a record to its name. It's accompanied her throughout most of her life, and for over 30 of those years, it's been silent. Ha-ha! Hi, hello. How are Sorry. You, you all right? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Good. Here we are. Good to see you again. You ready, Tim? Okay. Yeah, let's do the... do the thing. Oh, it's your There we are. <laughs> thank you. Oh, and you fixed my things. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it looks so much better. It does, doesn't it? Yes. So, well, oh, look, it's lit up and everything. It's never lit up. Yeah. Oh, it's got the thing. And what's more, it goes up and down. Oh, my gosh. It's up like it's supposed to. Oh, and the door shuts. And the door shuts, <laughs> yes. That was my bit of furniture restoration, the top. <laughs> do have a look at because this is Will's oh masterpiece. He's managed to do it, and he's got the rings out. He's got the rings out. And the watermark. So seeing it in this state, does it bring back any childhood memories? Oh, yeah, this is how it was. It was shiny. Mm. I don't think I've listened to it since I was about ten. You haven't listened to it since you was ten? No. Oh, that. <laughs> well, we can rectify that. Sounds to me like a cue to put a record on. And here's one I prepared earlier. 
and for Corrie and her late sister, there was one track that was always a firm favourite. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm just going to laugh now. <laughs> you said it's the one you wanted. <laughs> See, that's it now. I'm just going to laugh forever. <laughs> when I took this drawer out, you found my record. <laughs> no, what I found was worse than that, a load of broken bits of record in there. And some you don't know not... what it is? I don't know what it is, it's all in broken bits. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I had a thought, we all had a thought. If you like, you can take this record with you. There you go. All right? Is that right? It's a present, yeah, from, a so present from the repair shop. Oh, brilliant. Now I can get the kids to listen to it. Yeah, <laughs> you can do that. Just, just make sure you don't break this one. Yeah, I'll be careful with that one. Thank you. Thank Good you very enough. much. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers, Colin. Thanks. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. He's done such a lovely job. It just took me straight back to where my sister and I were on the floor laughing. And it's so lovely to have those memories of when we were kids. We had an amazing childhood. And just to be taken back there was so special. And that record is so funny. I think it's going to be worn out. I'm going to play it over and over again and drive everybody mad. <laughs>